Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda. Today we have Jamie here. We're gonna be talking about sway bars, specifically what they are and why you need adjustable sway bars or why you may need them. So I guess the first things first, Jamie, you're an expert behind the wheel. You're an expert under the car. Tell me about sway bars and why somebody may need to upgrade to an adjustable sway bar. Well, first off, we need to clarify what a sway bar is and what it actually does. They provide additional roll stiffness to prevent the body from rolling during turns. Uh, the idea behind them is you can get rid of the body roll without messing up your ride quality. You can still have a softly sprung car and still keep your good ride. So essentially what you're saying is that these sway bars have a rate, if you will, right? Like a spring rate on a spring, correct? Yeah, it's a torsion bar. Gotcha, so what's the relationship between, like, okay, why would somebody that has factory bars wanna make the jump to a Steeda adjustable bar? It's the, it will give you the biggest tuning ability to adjust between understeer and oversteer from a single part without really going up on spring rates and compromising your ride quality. You can up your uh, sway bar rate, slow the body roll, and the car still rides and drives fairly normally. You're not gonna, it's not gonna ride like a buckboard because you, you know, increase your spring rates. Right. And having it adjustable means that you can tune it to what you are doing with the car. If you're gonna, you know, go to a weekend autocross and you say, I would like it, uh, I'd like a little bit more control over the body roll, you can increase your roll stiffness on the bar with the adjusters. Uh, from the, the furthest hole will be your softest setting. And as you go in shortening this arm, you're increasing the stiffness of the bar. And if you say, oh, okay, I wanna stiffen it up for a look for more control, you can make adjustments and find some place where your car is happy and you can feel comfortable with it. Now, cars from the factory, even Mustangs, inherently have understeer. And that's mostly due to the safety regulations and things that have to be tuned in from the OE, correct? Yes. Now, somebody with factory suspension, factory springs, and if they were to add a sway bar, what what could they do with just sway bars alone to tune out that understeer? You're, with just the sway bars, you can stiffen or soften one end or the other of the car to adjust between understeer and oversteer. If you have a car that is understeering, means you're turning the steering wheel and the car just doesn't seem to respond, it keeps going in a straight line, you can balance that out by increasing the roll stiffness of the rear sway bar. You're changing your grip from the rear of the car to the front of the car, and it will balance out some of that understeer. Same thing for oversteer. You can go stiffer on the front bar and balance that out, as long as you if you're at the softest position of your rear bar. Because if you've got oversteer, you've got an adjustable bar and you're at the stiffest mm -hmm. setting, well, naturally you need to soften that back up. Right. But if you only have a single position bar, you are at the softest, then you can dial your front bar a little bit stiffer to help balance that out. And let's zoom out a bit. So um, understeer, like you explained, is when you're coming into a turn you turn the steering wheel and the car keeps going in the same direction it was. It's just not reacting to the steering inputs. And oversteer is? Oversteer is when the car over responds to your steering inputs. The back end of the car starts swinging around. It has less grip than the front. Okay, so we have an S550. It's got factory suspension with factory springs plus the adjustable sway bars. The great thing about the adjustable sway bars is that it allows you the adjustability to tune out that understeer like we talked about. Mm -hmm. Now, let's throw a wrench in the gears, or springs, if you will. If you were to upgrade to a set of Steeda Progressives, or one of our spring offerings for the S550, 
how would that affect the sway bars that are already on the car? Our sway bars were designed for the uh, higher than stock spring ratings. We tested with the different springs that we use, uh, the different ratings that we were intending, and developed the, sp uh, the sway bar rates around that set of springs that are uh, anywhere from stock to significantly higher than stock. And to give you enough adjustability in that range that you should be able to find something that works for what you intend on doing with your car. So essentially what you're saying is, uh, if you have those stock springs on there, you throw the sway bars, you get the car in the body roll where you want it and how it handles understeer and oversteer situations. On stock springs, you could be on the stiffest hole or the second stiffest hole, but if you were to throw some progressives on there or dual rates or something that had a higher spring rate, you may not like it. It may not perform the same way. No, right. it's not, it's not going to perform the same way because you've increased the spring rate and that's where testing comes in for the car owner and that's why they have adjustability built into the bars. You leave the bars where they are when you put the new springs and you drive it and you see what it's doing. And if it doesn't have the, the balance that you're looking for, it's simply make an adjustment. You adjust the bars to get it to where your uh, balance comes back to where, what you're looking for. So it's safe to say that the relationship between sway bar and spring, you know, if you go higher in spring rate, you may want to go softer on the bar. If you have a softer spring rate, you may want to go higher on the bar. Yes. Uh, the, the, the old rule of thumb was soft springs and big bars Interesting. or stiff springs and soft bars to be able to maintain your balance. Um, with the weight of these cars this day and age, that's not always true, but it's still, it's still a good way to look at it. Those factory springs are fairly soft rate. While our, our springs are uh, higher rates than stock, they're not significantly higher than stock. They're, they're designed to give you a more performance feel, to, control the car movements better, but they weren't made for competition. So with all of that said, would you say that for someone who just bought their first S550 Mustang, or frankly, any Mustang for that matter, or vehicle, if they're looking to upgrade their suspension, would sway bars be a good first step? On most cars, yes, because sway bars can be done as a standalone modification. Uh, it's not like some of the shocks and springs out there where they're meant to go with just certain components, the sway bars, especially ours, they'll go on without any other modifications and is a good initial step at trying to see what the car is capable of. And no alignment either. You don't have to realign it. Uh, like I say, there's no, no other modifications involved. It's you put the sway bars on and start adjusting until you find where it, what you're looking for, what you're intended to do with a car. And the adjustability allows you to adjust once other suspension parts are added. You know, if it is too stiff, once you start upgrading other things, okay, we can back it off. We they allow a lot of room to grow with the car. You can change between springs and other chassis components, and they allow you, because of the built-in adjustability, that they'll continue to grow with what you're doing with the car. Well, this about wraps things up in terms of sway bars for your S550 Mustang or any, any Mustang for that matter. Um, go ahead and comment below. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, kind of deep diving into the basics and kind of a tech talk per se of these parts and other suspension parts or any other parts in general, please let us know. Jamie, thank you so much for taking the time. Really appreciate it. Hit that like, subscribe button, the notification bell so you get a notification on your phone next time a student video drops. And don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.